Simulation theory has been the subject of heated debate and philosophical quandaries for years. But recently it has gained mainstream attention thanks in part to the outspoken views of tech magnate Elon Musk. Musk has famously said that there's a one in billion chance that we are not living inside of a simulation. And while the idea is tantalizing and it gives rise to a multitude of sci-fi scenarios, we're gonna take a deeper dive into simulation theory and explain where Mr. Musk might be missing the mark. But let's start with the basics. What is simulation theory? At its core, simulation theory posits that the reality as we know it is not genuine, but instead is a computer generated simulation or virtual reality that's so detailed we can't tell. This theory suggests that our daily experiences, emotions, and even our consciousness might be a product of a simulation, an advanced computer program designed by a higher form of intelligence. Simulation theory depends on a concept called computationalism, which is a philosophy of mind theory, stating that cognition is a form of computation, which must be the case for the simulation to contain a conscious subject like us. And the argument stems from the rapid advancement of artificial intelligence and virtual reality, and argues that if our civilization continues to innovate the way that it has, we'll inevitably create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality for those inside that simulation. And if these kind of simulations are actually possible, how could we ever be sure that we're not inside one of them right now? Now, Elon Musk's argument draws an inspiration from the philosopher Nick Bostrom, who wrote a 2003 paper titled, Are You Living Inside of a Computer Simulation? And in it, Bostrom argues that if there are any of these civilizations that can actually create this kind of simulation, they would probably run millions or even trillions of these things because of their capabilities technically and their desire to learn. And in that case, therefore, we would have a plethora of these simulated environments and most likely if we we're in any of them, it would be one of those, making the odds of this reality being the base reality, the one that's not simulated, extremely unlikely. And taking the thought process even further, there's probably even a cascading effect. Meaning if you can create an entire civilization on a computer, they will go on to figure out how to create civilizations and they'll do that on their computers. It's turtles all the way down. So Musk's argument basically just builds on this, saying with the exponential growth of our video games, our VR and our graphics, it's more likely than not, we're about to step into a world where we can create these simulations, meaning that it's possible and we're probably in one of the many, if it is possible, that aren't the base one. But before diving into some of the reasons why Elon's view on simulation theory might be incorrect, I should acknowledge that I have pondered this question and thought about it quite a bit in my life. I find the proposal really interesting. Years ago, after reading the techno thriller Demon by Daniel Suarez, I found myself deeply contemplating what the internal mindset might be of an NPC. In the book, Rogue Software is actually using an NPC inside of a video game to try to figure out who the right people are to recruit to its project. So I would imagine what is it like to be an NPC, especially one that's more advanced than what we think of now, something that might even have a trillion parameter model inside their head, something that can learn and adjust to the environment the same way AI does. And from that perspective, it seems like conceivable that they might start to question the origin of their own existence as they're trying to figure out where they are in this universe and what they're capable of and how the environment works, much like we do, honestly. As they learn more about their environment and they look at the physics of the world that they're in, they might see something like a Big Bang, some sort of single point origin, which would basically be the computer booting up from inside. They might also inherit certain digital aspects that are similar to the physics we have, like three dimensional space or a linear frame rate where time moves forward. And throughout my life, my belief in this theory has occasionally been reinforced by some of the things that we've learned in physics. For example, time does seem like it's discrete at the end of the day. There is a Planck length to time where you can't divide it any further, which seems a whole lot like a frame rate. There's also Planck distance. There seems to be something kind of coarse grain that we can't can't go below. Essentially a quantized reality, something that would seem sort of reminiscent of a video game. But to really frame this conversation in a way that's productive, we first need to invoke the anthropic principle. The anthropic principle is a philosophical consideration, that observations we make about our universe around us have to be compatible with conscious life because we are conscious life observing it in the first place. In essence, it suggests that as a conscious observer, we already have to have constraints on the universe to some degree. Because if anything could happen or everything always was happening, then we would feel like we're part of the everything that's happening all the time. We wouldn't actually be a point to observe from. So there are some different formulations of the anthropic principle. One's called the WAP, which is the weak anthropic principle, which is just the broader version, meaning that if we as any kind of observer make any kind of observation about the universe, they have to be consistent with each other. But there's also the SAP, which is the strong anthropic principle, which suggests that the universe must be in some kind of a configuration to permit the existence of 
conscious beings like us at some point in its history. And these principles are often invoked in cosmological discussions, especially when discussing the fine-tuning of the universe's properties to accommodate life. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the criticisms that you can apply to both Elon and Nick's arguments. And the first one will come from their anthropic reasoning. If most civilizations at our level of advancement do go on to produce these kind of simulations, then it's highly probable that we ourselves are one of the simulated versions. So picking that statement apart, there are several philosophers who pose alternative arguments for why that's not the way to think about it. Barry Danton, for example, suggests that some alternatives, like one called the neural ancestral simulation, in which high-tech future humans could induce experiences that are indistinguishable from reality. Meaning that what feels like the historical world that was before us might not have ever existed. That could all be sort of implanted as a sort of fake memory or as part of the universe that feels like it was forever, but it was just something we're experiencing as a fake history. Uh, cosmologist Sean Carroll also questions it, challenging the hypothesis by pointing to its unnecessary contradictions and extra complexities. There's also a debate about the actual motivations, like would they really be that likely to want to create these simulations in the first place? Physicist Paul Davies has shown some skepticism about the possibility of even running a simulation this complicated. Philosopher Preston Green even suggested that by discovering that we're in a simulation might be the trigger that ends it, like ends the video game, which of course echoes some humorous ideas from this book, which is Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy, full of liquor, of course. Uh, Robin Hansen talks about if these are simulations and they become smart enough to figure out that they're in their simulation, then they also might figure out a way to adjust their behavior to like basically live longer or to please the kind of layer above them, possibly remaining interesting or praiseworthy, which is one thing you do hear Elon Musk talk about, like we better stay interesting so they don't turn off our simulation. So in terms of the anthropic principle, the simulation hypothesis has broader implications in philosophy, touching on issues like metaphysics, epistemology, and even the nature of consciousness itself. So another big thing we have to talk about is maybe computationalism is just wrong in the first place. So computationalism is required for simulation theory, and that means that we have to be able to create consciousness through computational means alone. So let's poke around at that. Like maybe that's where the flaw in the argument lies. No matter how much computation we give to something like chat GPT, and no matter how smart it feels like it becomes, maybe it never really does have that internal sense of self, or at least one that we wouldn't consider conscious in the same way we are. Of course, this might be right. Like Max Tegmark says, consciousness might be what it feels like to process information from the inside. And in that case, I guess it can just exist anywhere in the universe, wherever the mathematical laws hold, which should be everywhere. But in a nutshell, what I'm saying is there's a debate whether or not we can fully replicate consciousness. Some think that consciousness might just encompass something broader. Simulation theory might always be wrong because it's just simply too hard to ever, no matter how advanced we get, create an entire universe that's simulated. And of course, we've made remarkable progress towards video games. We're kind of crossing that uncanny valley now. And there's, you know, infinite amount of years in the future to keep progressing on this technology and maybe AI and all these things will continually help us. But there's such a vast difference between what would be required for advanced artificial intelligence games versus an entire universe where quarks and subatomic particles all need to be simulated. Even AI or quantum mechanics, maybe the tools just aren't ever gonna be there to truly make a simulated universe. Another argument against simulation theory is simply Occam's razor. This principle suggests that the simplest explanation is usually the correct one. And assuming that an advanced civilization has both the desire and resources to create countless simulations adds another layer of complexity to the nature of existence. It's a grand assumption and it's based on limited data. Another reason why simulation theory might just not be right, our understanding of physics, particularly quantum mechanics, seems to be throwing a wrench in the idea of simulating everything the way that a classical computer would. Quantum events are probabilistic, not deterministic meaning that they might be impossible to perfectly simulate. So while simulation theory, of course, is a provocative and fascinating concept, we have to remember that it remains just that, a concept. It's a topic worth exploring and discussing, but to claim it with certainty, or especially to use like probabilistic stuff the way Elon Musk did, just seems like a little too far at this point. I mean, I love it. I definitely find it intriguing and, and I kind of like want to believe it in a sense. I'm 
becoming more fascinated with the idea of intelligence being something that is just computationally everywhere in the universe. But science thrives on skepticism and rigorous testing and discussion, so I'm trying to stay in that mindset. Evidence suggesting that we live in a simulation, although it's not completely off the table, it's like on the far, far corner, like behind the dessert. But it's fascinating that we can even entertain such an idea. A true testament to human beauty and curiosity. So now it's time for you to run a high probability simulation of smashing that subscribe button. Help me get to 6,000 subscribers and check out all the other videos on Curious Future if you like this one.